What's up? My name is Techno, here for Troubleshoot, and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize the Crew 2 for a ton extra FPS. It's not the newest game, but it is still somewhat demanding, especially if you haven't got yourself a newer graphics card through the whole GPU shortage as of recent. Why such an old game? Well, it's not that old, but also it's currently free to play for the weekend on Steam, so hey, I thought I'd cover it. This video isn't going to cover Windows optimizations. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more performance out of your computer. This video is only going to focus on the in-game optimization to get the highest FPS possible. Of course, before we do get into the actual game itself, make sure you do common practice things like making sure Windows and your graphics card drivers are all up to date and you have as few things as possible running in the background. On top of that, overlays such as Discord and the rest should be turned off if you're not specifically using them. Regardless, let's get straight into the actual game itself. Once again, do check the description down below for even more performance. Do keep in mind that this game has a 60 FPS cap, so you won't be getting anything above this. This is more for lower end computers that struggle to keep it at 60, or you're experiencing huge random drops of FPS, making the game rather unplayable. It's not exactly unheard of, especially at high resolutions. Opening up Steam, or whatever platform you have the game on, currently it's free on Steam. There aren't any launch arguments that we can add, as far as I understand. If I'm wrong about that, you'll find them in the description down below. So, let's hop into the game. So, when you get to the first menu, the first thing you'll want to do is head to Options, then Video, and change the screen resolution to a compatible resolution for your monitor. In my case, it's 2560 by 1440. And of course, raise the FPS limit to 60 instead of just 30. Then full screen mode should be selected and resolution scale of 100. Brightness is your user preference and VSync should be turned off unless you're specifically getting screen tearing. Then I'll click apply. Okay. And just for the fun of it, I'll crank it up to ultra and return to the actual game itself just to see what kind of FPS we get. In the top left hand corner you can see my Steam overlay with the FPS counter enabled. That's what I'll be using when I'm talking about my FPS in this video. And now that I'm in game you can see that I'm getting a solid 40-42ish FPS. You may be wondering how exactly am I getting these on a 3080 Ti? Well, heading into the options screen. You can see on the video tab over here that my resolution is absolutely insane using NVIDIA DSR. Anyways, beyond the point, how do we optimize everything below this point here from the video preset? Well, obviously, the further to the left you push this, the better the FPS you'll get, assuming you don't select custom, so low. I'll apply it, and immediately from ultra down to low, you can see I'm now more than happily reaching the 60 FPS cap and I'm getting a ton of screen tearing on my side here. This is one of the issues with a frame limited game like this, but assuming you can't reach the 60 FPS mark, well, that's exactly what this guide is for. If you do optimize your game and you start getting screen tearing, open up settings, video, and make sure VSync is turned on. Anyways, let's get into customizing the video preset down here. So obviously the lower things are, the more FPS you'll be getting. First of all, depth of field. Usually you won't need to worry about this. Motion blur as well, unless you like feeling like you're going fast. In which case, put this on low. Grass, you're not going to be staring at, so you can comfortably push that down. As well as the lighting here, but this is definitely one of the more noticeable effects. So you may want to have this a bit higher. Anti-aliasing, I'd usually turn off completely. Weather is something you can lower as well. This is very situational, and if you find FPS drops in certain weather, this is what you should turn down. Then finally, the last big thing for FPS is the shadows over here. Obviously, this is a racing game, you're not going to be staring at shadows all the time. Push this all the way down to low, or even off if you wish. For me, I'll be leaving it on low, as I do want some shadows. And geometry as well, usually this relies on the amount of VRAM you have, so lowering this may not have the biggest impact, but it may have some impact on your PC. I'll leave this on, say, medium. Now, the textures and environment mapping are two options that really completely depend on the amount of VRAM in your graphics card. If you've got 8 to 10 gigabytes or so, comfortably leave this on Ultra. Otherwise, if you've got a, say, 1070 or... 2070, 3070, etc. You can push this down to high, a 60, push it down once more, and all the way down to a 50, all the way down to low. It really depends on the amount of VRAM. If you have two gigs, put it on low, four, medium, six, high, anything above that, ultra. It shouldn't have too much of an impact on your FPS, just these two options here. If you've got tons of VRAM, you can comfortably leave these all the way up, or even on medium or high if you wish, it's your preference. 
these two should have the least impact on your FPS, assuming you have the VRAM available for it. Scrolling down further, ambient occlusion, you can turn this off for a bit of extra FPS, though it's very, very minimal in the amount of FPS it'll take away, though the effect that it gives is also minimal at that. Screen space reflection is an ancient technology, it's nothing like ray traced reflections, and it only reflects what's on your screen. It doesn't render anything extra outside of your camera, so this is usually a very cheap effect to have. You can leave this on, you don't have to turn it off, as you'll barely gain any FPS with the setting. Then finally, terrain, once again, I'm pretty sure this relies on the amount of VRAM in your graphics card. You should set it accordingly, the same way you have textures and environment mapping above, though this is all really your preference. Usually I'd leave this on medium, and I wouldn't go lower unless I absolutely need extra FPS. Finally, the three monitor FOV scale factor. If you have three monitors while you're playing this game stretch across all of them, the higher your field of view is here, the more you'll be rendering, and hence the lower your FPS will be. So you may need to push this down to the left, even if you're not comfortable seeing less. Anyways, I'll apply the current settings and head back, and you should see that I'm comfortably hitting the 60 FPS mark, whereas before I was sitting around 40. In fact, playing around with the settings a little bit more, I've lowered the volumetric FX option over here as well. It seems to be lowering my FPS quite a bit to have this higher. And of course, turning off shadows completely will give you a huge FPS boost. Though, once again, it does remove all of their shadows. I went from a solid 50 to a solid 60, which may be what you really need. But for me, roaming around in a world like this is a bit too unplayable. It seems really unnatural. So even though I'm not going to be staring at shadows all the time, I do want to keep them on at least somewhat, as it makes the world seem a whole lot more believable. Once again, you may need to enable VSync, which should artificially raise your FPS, or at least to the eyes of Steam, for example. So if you are measuring your FPS while you're playing the game, it's a good idea to have VSync off if you can handle screen tearing. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick optimization guide. Of course, I've pushed this game to its absolute limit, cranking the resolution way up into probably the 8K realm, or whatever you'd consider it, which is really killing my 3080 Ti. But at least it did allow me to illustrate the different settings and the impact that they have, especially when there's a 60 FPS cap, which is super low, and in my opinion, shouldn't be there at all for PC games. Anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobay here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!